Hello, Didier Stevens here. In my last blog post, I analyze an encoded payload. And it's not uh, your standard uh, encoding. And I will show you how through uh, statistical analysis and uh, guessing of plain text, you can try to decode this uh, payload. So this is uh, the blog post. Let's start here. So, let's take a look at the payload. And you see, it's a lot of lowercase letters. So my, my first idea when I saw this is this. This is net BIOS name encoding. Um, this is something that Cobblestrike uses, for example, in, in DNS um, transfers. And I do have a suspicion that this is an encoded cobble strike beacon. And because I did a uh, dynamic analysis where uh, I took a, a process memory dump and I found a cobble strike beacon. So now I'm going to try to decode this. So since it is NetBIOS, well, I assume it is NetBIOS, I'm using my base 64 dump tool that can handle all kinds of encodings, not only base64 and NetBIOS name is one of them. So I'm going to try all the encodings. I'm going to give it a minimum length of 100 uh, because uh, it should be a long payload and also just going to look at the uniques here of the payload. Okay. So and, and here I don't see anything that, that I recognize. Mm. So it found here the very long payload, and that's uh, yeah, the, the same size as the file, mm -hmm. as you can see. So it found a complete payload, and that corresponds to base64 and base85 encoding. But only 17 characters are actually used, so of the uh, base64, all the base64 characters and all the base85 characters, only 17 of them are used. So this is most likely not uh, base64 of base85. Uh, and more importantly, it's also not NetBIOS team, like I assume, because um, base64 them doesn't find NetBIOS name encoding. Mm. And when I'm taking a, a second look, uh, I also understand now that my assumption was wrong because I have letters like Y here and T and Q and those letters do not appear in NetBIOS name encoding. Eh? NetBIOS name encoding is hexa it's like hexadecimal, 16 digits, but instead of using decimal digits and the first six letters of the alphabet, Mm. NetBIOS name encoding uses the 16 first letters of the alphabet. Okay. So now I'm going to get some statistics with my byte set tools on the payload. So indeed, and uh, there are only 17 uh, unique bytes. So let's see with a uh, range view option R which bytes those are. So you have the range A, B, C, D, E, F, then I, and then here in the alphabet O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, V, W, and then finally Y. So 17 digits. Uh, so this is likely to be uh, hexadecimal. Hexadecimal requires 16 uh, characters, not, not 17. So the, the 17 character might be some uh, obfuscation or that is not used or, for, or it might represent something else. And so that's what we are going to try to figure out. So in the blog post <coughs> here, I'm starting to write a program and, and that program is available. If you go to the uh, uh, blog post, you will find a, a link to GitHub to the to program. So this is a Python program that will um, that I will make here to try to decode this. And it is based on my Python template for uh, processing binary files. So I have that file here, that template. And if you go all the way down here, then you, you will find this here. So this is where you put your Python code uh, to, to process the data of the binary file 
that was red. So you have to put it in between here and, and here. So the default is just to print some information and do a dump of the first uh, 100, well, 256 uh, characters in hexadecimal. Yeah. We are going to do something different. So I'm going to modify uh, that code step by step. And for that, so you have the complete result here in my custom decoder. But here I made all kinds of variants, uh, versions, where I do this step by step. Okay, so version 1a, what I'm going to do here is to just try to take the first two digits of the payload each time. So here, just take two digits, try to convert them to hexadecimal, and if that doesn't work, then we just ignore it and I do this uh, for each one. So for example, FFFF -F 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 here, that should be able to convert. And then we, we will see what we end up with. So this is the Python code I wrote to do this. Now, first of all, so the, the binary data that was read, I have it here. But as I'm actually dealing with letters, I prefer to work here with uh, strings, not with uh, bytes, but with strings. So I'm using the decode method to convert this to a string encoded payload. And then I will iterate over that string. So I have a data list, an empty list. And as long as the encoded payload is not empty, I'm going to take the first two bytes and I'm going to drop the first two bytes from the encoded payload so that I move on. And then those first two characters, and not actually bytes, but characters, I'm going to try to convert them to an integer uh, in hexadecimal notation. And that I append to the list. If that fails, I get a value error, and then I just move on. I don't do anything. And when all the payload is processed, I convert that data to bytes, and then I do an hexascii dump. So let's see how that looks. 1A on the payload. Okay, so and this is the output that we get. So that's not very useful. That doesn't me, uh, help me that much. So what I'm going to try now here is adds something. So if, if we cannot convert it, we, we're going to try to add something. So that's in B. And what I'm just going to do is add a value zero. And so that's the only change between one and A and B that I do. I'm going to add a zero null byte and see if that gives me more insight. And actually, neither does that give me more information. Okay. So, remember that I said that I think this is a cobble strike beacon, so a, a Windows PE file. Windows PE files always starts with the letters MZ. I can show you that here with an ASCII hexadecimal dump of, let's say, the first 100 bytes of Notepad. Okay. So here you see MZ, 4D5A. So I will assume that my payload also starts with MZ, but encoded. So 4D5A. And here I have YDUA. So I'm going to assume that the Y corresponds to a 4, the D corresponds to a D, the U to 5, and the A to A. So that is something I will encode as follows. I'm adding this dictionary. Y is 4, D is D, U is 5, and A is A. And then here, with these two lines of code, I'm just going to uh, take the encoded payload and replace this value with this value uh, for all the encodings. 
and then again just dump this and, and see if we end up with something now just remark d converting to d and a converting to a i shouldn't do that actually but i'm adding it i'm still adding it to a dictionary here to know that those are letters that uh, i actually made a guess for so let's see what that gives so custom decoder c on the payload okay and now yeah we get mz uh, of course that's to be expected but then we also here see some more letters like the t and d o and that is interesting because if you take a look at the beginning let's here take 200 of notepad pe files have also this message in them this program cannot be run in dos mode now there can be variations uh, and it can also be um, uh, just removed uh, or replaced by something totally different uh, but often it will be that text uh, if nothing has been tampered with the compiler will put that in and it's also something that is not functional and if I look again here at my output so I have the T here that might correspond to this T and the DO that might correspond to, to this and if you look at the T here the T is 54 in hexadecimal and 54 that is indeed something we already have the letters for U y and u so in my next version what i'm going to do here is i'm storing the string here and like i said okay this is a default string but there might be some variations to it and if there is a variation here in this payload then yeah uh, the decoding will not work properly i convert this to hexadecimal and i just output it and then return so let's run this number d okay and so this is what i have I, like i said this here is 54 okay so 5 4 that actually corresponds to u y okay so in the next version i'm going to try to find that position find in my payload where i have u y so the letter uppercase letter t and print its position okay okay so and this is found here at position 86 so that's quite in the beginning which is good so next modification here i will print uh, select the encoded uh, payload so this here selects me the encoded representation of this string here exclamation mark this program cannot be run in this mode so that's what i select here i print this and then here i'm going to iterate over all the letters in the encoded and not encoded uh, string this program cannot be run in dos mode and for each le encoded letter that i find and that is not yet in the dictionary here i will put it in the dictionary so i'm if it is not in the dictionary i do put it in the dictionary and if the letter here is already in the dictionary if it is already found then i will check if it corresponds with the letter that i already found and if it is a different letter then i will raise an exception and different because then i don't have a one-to-one -one relationship so what i want to do here is populate my dictionary with this encoding so with the translation and if i have more than one uh, matching then i will raise an exception okay so let's run this version f Okay, and I don't get an exception 
so that is good so my program here was pop able to populate a dictionary by doing this translation so if it finds the r it puts in the dictionary r is 2 then w is 1 u is 5 and u is 5 is something we already found and so that doesn't raise an exception and so on eh? going here over the complete list eh? y is 6 u is 5 okay so let's see what that gives us so here two new lines printing the, the size of the dictionary and printing the dictionary itself. And like this. Okay, and we already have 14 letters, which is very good, and because we have 17 in total. And, and here are the different translations that we found. And do notice that the, the hexadecimal, the standard normal hexadecimal characters A through F here are translated for here D is D, a is A, um, what do I, E is E, F if, uh, is F. So it looks like th they are not actually translating the hexadecimal uh, letters A through F. So now, here, let's just run this. So I did away with the return eh, and let's continue to run this. So do the translation eh, with the populated di dictionary that we have and see what dump that we get. Let me clear the line. H and do a more. Okay, and that is already a very good result. Okay, we have the MC, MZ here and this here that we expected. Then also the PE. Uh, the PE header and then also sections like dot text dot data and and so on so that's a very good result now what is not good is here at position 3c uh, here that's here 3c you should have a pointer a value that points to the start of the PE header, so P here. And you see this is here not an actual, that's another pointer. Eh? This is part of this string. So there is still some translation to do. So let's try to, to figure out what we have to do. So I do that in version I. I will print out here the letters that I have not yet been able to translate. Eh? that are not yet present in the dictionary. Okay, and so these are the letters B, C, and Q. Okay, so three letters we still have to find a uh, translation for. And remark that I said it looks like that they are not translating the letters, so B and C might actually translate to B and C. So that leaves us with Q. So what I'm going to do next here is just print out. So that is a new line. That's what has changed. Just print out the, the first 80 characters of the payload that I was able to partially decode and, and see what we end up with. Okay, so that is what we have here, 4D5A9Q. Okay, so here we already have a, a Q that appears, and then 03, Q, Q, 04, and so on. Now let's compare this with the, the header of uh, a normal PE file like Notepad. So I'm going to do an hexadecimal dump without any white space, uh, uppercase X without any white space, and I'm doing this for the first 40 bytes of Notepad. First 40 bytes of Notepad. Okay. And so we have here 4D5A9 and then 0003. And here we have 4D5A9Q03. Now, let's put that beneath uh, on top of each other and I've done that in the blog post so let's switch to that part in the blog post mm. and as you can see here in the blog post I highlight each time the, the changes the additions that I make to the program ok 
Okay. Okay, we are here. Eh? So 4D5A9. 4D5A9, that's the same. And then here we have a Q. And then here we have a 0. And then here we have a 0, a 0, and then a 3, and a 3 here. And then here again, 3. Eh? 3 and a Q, and then a 0, a 0, and then a 0, and a 4. So it looks like the Q represents more than one zero. If I do the following substitution, eh, so here I have four zeros, and here I have Q and one zero, and here I have seven zeros, and here I have two Qs and one zero. So if I'm assuming that Q represents three zeros, then I can translate this uh, properly. And then I have the same one. So I, the solution, what I'm going to add to the dictionary is Q e equals three zeros. So that's what I do in this version here. Q equals three zeros. So let's run that version. K. Okay. Okay, and now this looks really better because now at position 3C I have a pointer, an offset, 80 hexadecimal, and if I go to 80, the position 8 I here, indeed I find the PE header. So that looks much better here. It does indeed looks like Q represents three uh, zeros. Okay. So, what am I left with here with the letters B and C? And now let's see which hexadecimal digits I still haven't translated to. I, I, I'm adding this code to, to do that. So the letters that I still have not found a replacement for are B and C. And then the hexadecimal digits that I have not yet used here in the translation are also B and C. So I'm going to work from the assumption that B translates to B and C to C and see if we end up with something uh, that is a PE file. So what I'm going to do at the end is just write the decoded payload to a file payload.dx.vir. So let's run this. I'm on the payload. Okay. And now here I have payload.dx.vir. So with my tool PE check that analyzes PE files, let's see if this runs and indeed it is able to decode this. So this is indeed the decoded PE file. And now let's see if this is indeed a beacon. And indeed my tool 1768 is able to uh, extract the configuration of that beacon. And, and as you can see, it's a known license ID. Uh, it is used a lot. So this is a pirated version of uh, Cobalt Psych that was used to, to create uh, this malware. So occasionally I, I do have to do a decoding like this uh, where, the, where I don't have the decoder. Now for this case here, I was also able to, to find the decoder. It's a .NET assembly that does the decoding and um, yeah, it, it matches up with the decoding that I did here and by doing some statistical analysis and making assumptions of, of what is encoded like uh, MZ here and like this string. Now, if, if you don't know uh, what is actually encoded, then of course it's uh, much more difficult to uh, try to uh, decode this.